Hi, I'm Tom Kite. I'm part of the engineering team here at Audio Precision that developed the 555 hardware and the software that goes with it. And uh, right now I'd like to show you some of the jitter uh, generation and analysis capability that we have in the instrument. So I've set up a test here using the digital serial input output uh, module, which is an optional module for the uh, hardware. And uh, you'll notice I don't have any cables. I'm just using an internal loopback. So I've set things up for two channel operation. It's running at 48 kilohertz sample rate. And I've got it in 32-bit audio mode. So we can actually generate and analyze 32-bit audio. You can see here I'm, I'm generating a sine wave at full scale. And here's the uh, FFT that goes along with it. And you can see it's got a very low noise floor here. That's because we're using 32-bit. And you can see the total harmonic distortion there, very, very low, much lower than you're used to seeing with 24-bit audio because, you know, that's what you get with 32 bits. Okay, so that's all very nice. Um, but uh, one of the things that, you know, a lot of our customers would like to do is to uh, apply jitter to a digital output and see how that affects the, the device that they're testing. So let me show you a little bit about how jitter works in the system. So uh, I can go over here to my uh, clocks panel and uh, there are some other interesting things here that maybe we'll talk about in a different video. But uh, uh, right now we'll just look at the jitter generator down here. So I'm just going to turn it on and uh, I've actually set it to generate a 5 kilohertz sine wave at 100 nanoseconds. And um, so let me put this away again and you can see well going back to the digital audio that we're looking at well there's there's no effect on it and that's what we would expect you know in a digital to digital connection jitter shouldn't have any effect assuming that it's not so big that you completely lose lock of your clocks and so so we don't see any effect of jitter here and that's how it should be but one of the nice things about the system is that we can look at a jitter waveform just like we can look at audio waveforms and we can analyze them in exactly the same way. So um, you'll notice there's a control here called measure. And right now it says audio. In other words, we're just looking at the embedded audio uh, in the digital bitstream. Uh, but instead, we can look at the jitter in the bitstream. So now what we're doing is instead of, of taking that embedded audio and pushing it through the audio analysis system, we're actually demodulating the jitter that's on the interface, converting it to, to a digital waveform and analyzing it just like it was audio. So you have available all the things that you have available for audio analysis, things like the scope, the FFT and the meters and so on, but now they're all actually analyzing the jitter waveform rather than the audio waveform. So if I pop that away, now we can see, oh, there's the sine wave again. And that, this, this now is the jitter sine wave. So this is how much are the uh, clocks varying from their nominal positions over time. And you can see, indeed, they are varying by up to 100 nanoseconds in either direction, which is what we asked for. And here's the FFT. And you can see, just like, uh, just like with uh, embedded audio, we've got a noise floor, we've got the fundamental and so on. And you can see the noise floor a bit more ragged than you typically get with digital audio, but that's just because, you know, jitter is kind of inherently noisy and demodulating it is a noisy business and so on. Um, but, but nevertheless, you know, there, there's, the, um, there's the spectrum. And we can even do things like measure the THD plus N of the jitter. Why not? Uh, here it is. It's uh, better than minus 60 dB. So there's a, what's that, 0.1% distortion or so. Um, in fact, we can look at it in percent if we want to. There we go. There we go. A little bit less than 0.1% distortion, and that's of the jitter itself. So we've actually got a, a low distortion jitter generator and analyzer here. So um, in case you're interested in jitter distortion. Um, so uh, the jitter demodulator has a nice wide bandwidth. You can see here it goes up to about 150 kilohertz or so. So you can see any of the jitter products that might be out there in your system. So, um, you know, you have access to all of the same uh, measurement methods and filters and so on that you do for embedded audio. It's just that now we're doing it on jitter as well.